Hi there, and welcome to a new episode of History Sparkle, the set of videos where I provide an historical context around a certain historical period or certain literature masterpiece. Today, we're talking about one of the widest historical periods that England has ever seen, the Victorian age. Are you ready? So, shall we go? With the History Sparkle of today, I will try to provide some context to the most famous English literature masterpiece and give us some reasons to why this period is so popular in English history. In 1837, a young girl that aged only 18 was crowned queen. She was the only heir of King William IV, but she was his niece, and her name was Queen Victoria. Her reign lasted from 1837 to her death in 1901, at the age of 82. She reigned for 64 years and over the 64 years, England went through enormous social and financial changes. First question, what was England like when Queen Victoria ascended to the throne? Started in 1760, England was exactly in the middle of the Industrial Revolution when Queen Victoria got to the throne. This means a lot of things all together. A boost in society evolution. Thanks to the progress of technology, England was literally invaded by innovation that deeply changed the way of living. Transportation. With trains that permit traveling long distances and transport big loads on long distance like coal, iron, steel, there was progress in communication with the invention of telegraph and radio. There were also improvements in the agricultural section that made provision for people not living in the country possible. Although there was a crack in society organization, without the progress, also big social problems emerged. In fact, Queen Victoria's government had to deal with rural unemployment and migration to the towns, which means that the towns needed to expand and horrendous conditions of working and living for the working class. All in all, to face all this, the archaic political system of the country was forced to change and Queen Victoria was the queen who had to adapt to this. Over the period of Queen Victorian reign, another historical period happens, the era of revolution. That's right, in the 19th century, countries like Italy, that was forming in this period, France, Prussia and Austria underwent wars and revolution. Garibaldi was the most famous person at the time, but England stays outside from all of this. Obviously, this allowed England to concentrate the cash flow of the state in fixing and improving internal systems, making it a high-functional country when the other countries in Europe had to face the price of war. All of this is not because of Queen Victoria, but she had the luck to be on the throne at the time, and she was able to make through this period wisely. So, we normally associated the greatness of Britain to her. In that period, England started to call itself the British Empire. Let's have a look why. First of all, the noun empire, emperor and empress had been brought to Europe again by Napoleon Bonaparte. England took a lot of pride in being the country that defeated one of the most controversial people of political scenario of the time. And though Queen Victoria was not yet queen at the time, the Waterloo battle took place in 1815 and she was crowned in 1837, the title Empire was now in people's mind a word that presented to greatness. And since British colonies were now extending all over the globe, what better time to steal the title from Napoleon? In the 19th century, the British colonies were all over the world, with countries like Canada, Australia, India, South Africa, some other countries on the western coast of Africa, Malaysia, Burma and other islands. The empire was a source of pride for England and it also provided raw material and a variety of food which made England stronger and unique. The country was becoming so rich and popular that Prince Albert, Queen Victoria's husband, had the idea of the Great Exhibition. 
The exhibition had the aim to exhibit competition and encouragement. A special building made of glass and iron called the Crystal Palace was specially built for this occasion. Queen Victoria opened the great exhibition in the Crystal Palace on May 1st in 1851. The exhibit included every model of the Victorian age. Most of them were possible only thanks to their colonial empire. It showed pottery, porcelain, ironwork, furniture, perfumes, pianos, firearm, fabrics, steam hammer and hydraulic presses. Although the initial aim was to be a celebration of art and industry, it turned out to be more a showcase for British manufacturers. The Great Exhibition ran from May to October. During that period, over 6 million people passed through those crystal gates. If you're wondering where's the Crystal Palace now and why you've never seen it, well, the answer is simple, it doesn't exist anymore. The architect, Joseph Paxton, had conceived it in a way so it would be easily erected and easily dismantled. It was a further demonstration of British wealth. They could erect temporary buildings just to show the world of what they could do. Another deep change that took place during Queen Victoria's reign, as we already said, was the industrialization. The Industrial Revolution brought changes that upset the society forever. You all know that with the event of factories, the people left the countries to go search for work in the cities, but have you ever stopped to think what consequences this have brought? Life in the countryside became even more miserable as there were less people working in the field with the number of crops and products requested to feed the city kept growing. This resulted in introducing machinery as well as in the country and expenses of the poor peasants who got into debt to buy them and never really managed to uplift their financial situation. The cities were literally swarmed by workers, forcing the metropolis to build apartment blocks to provide lodgings for the workers. But the people were a lot, with little money. No one really cared about their condition and little money was invested in these projects. That's when warehouses were built, institutions that were meant to provide the shelter to poverty-stricken people, but in reality they were prison systems which kept all the money earned by the workers living in and provided no way out for the financial situation. Charles Dickens well brought this to the attention of British people who preferred to ignore what was really happening. Indeed. The government tried to do something unsuccessfully with a set of poor laws, but in reality, boosting the industrialization was more important than helping that part of the population. If the working classes were living in such a poor condition, the upper classes were experiencing a wealth never seen before. Thus, being a part of a higher class was more important than ever. Class was based not only on wealth, but also on culture, occupation, education, family structure, politics, and also sexual behavior. I guess you can see now where Oscar Wilde's criticism was coming from. If this sounds all hypocrite and shallow to you, you should bear in mind that it's precisely this need of status that allows science to develop enormously. Charles Darwin developed the theory of evolution. In medicine, the role of electricity in our bodies was being inquired, think of Frankenstein, and some diseases were better comprehended, such as malaria, Ronald Ross found its cause, and cholera, John Snow found that it was spread through water and not through air. In technology, we see the invention of the telephone, the phonograph, the microphone, the telegraph, the gas engine and the iridescent lamp. It's undeniable that all these events changed our society forever and Queen Victoria became the symbol of evolution and modernity, possibly just by luck. Anyway. The sovereign in England is expected to be a symbol of integrity for the people who she represented and Queen Victoria respected her role with high commitment. She married Prince Albert with whom she was apparently really in love and she embraced the role of the submissive wife that the standard expected. Yes, because the second main stain of Victorian society after class was gender. Women were perceived weak, totally dependent on men and naturally inferior. 
Queen Victoria avoided the social expectation for a wife and gave birth to nine children, with whom she married to all the possible royal families in Europe, granting herself the name of Europe's grandmother. Think that Kaiser William from Germany and the Tsar Nikolai from Russia, the two major forces in World War I, were cousins, both of them related to Queen Victoria. Another curiosity that you may not know about this period is how tea became such a great element of Englishness. Again, Queen Victoria is partly responsible for this. Morality, even if it was just a fake display of it, was an essential element of Victorian society. Due to the terrible condition of the working classes we're in, it's not surprising that alcoholism was spreading through them. In an attempt to find this and encouraging people to drink tea instead of gin, Queen Victoria had the idea to boost tea and porcelain cups as a symbol of greatness of the British Empire, as both tea and cups were made from British colonies. While tea party as a ritual in the upper classes has a different origin, that is, from the need to eat something between lunch, had very early around noon, and supper, had around 9 pm at the end of a working day. Furthermore, it is due to talk about the double standard of sexuality in that period as it influenced a lot of lies, including Oscar Wilde's one. Victorians lived with the belief that men wanted and needed sex, but women were free of sexual desire and submitted to sex only to please their husband and to adapt to their role of reproduction. Yet, it was also a society plagued with venereal diseases and prostitution and many women were diagnosed with hysteria that indeed was a consequence of an unsatisfied sexual life. The Victorian age was prolific also in literary production. Indeed, over this period there were romantic poets such as Samuel Taylor Coleridge, William Wordsworth, Lord Byron, John Keats, Percy B. Shelley, Elizabeth Barbara Browning, great novelists such as Jane Austen, Charlotte and Emily Bronte, Lewis Carroll, Charles Dickens, Arthur Conan Doyle, Thomas Hardy, Mary Shelley, Robert Louis Stevenson, Oscar Wilde, Bram Stoker, Marianne Evans, under the name of George Eliot. The period also gave way to great journalists such as Charles Dickens, Henry Mayhew, Eliza Lynn Linton, Wilkie Collins, Matthew Arnold. Given on how many social and economical changes happened in this period, it's easy to understand why it is so important. It practically shaped England and also Europe to the modern society that we know now. It was also the cradle of some myths like vampires, the idea of Gothic developed in that area, and it is also the period in which the first known serial killer operated, Jack the Ripper. The Victorian age made England the most powerful country entering World War I and thought it is named after a queen. It's not only her who made this period memorable, but a whole mixture of people who had the luck to live in the same period and had the occasion to make England both great from some aspect and miserable. So thank you very much for watching this video, if you like it please give it a thumb up, if you want to see more videos about literature and history you can subscribe to the channel, remember we are a language school, I am Claudia the leader teacher, we are just outside Milan and we teach English, French, Italian and Spanish, we teach teenagers as long as adults and we give lessons online and in present. Since this is the last History Sparkle of the Year, I seize the occasion to wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And I hope to see you soon with another Literature Snacks next year. Bye bye!